going on YouTube this is Necrostevo and today we have an OU match for once normally I don't do this but as you can see I actually brought an OU team my opponent uh, Rukia or Rukaria or Wave Bomber if you know from Twitter is my uh, probably one of my main rivals for OU uh, he's just he just is so good at building Teams with really good synergy, but also handle a lot of threats and still utilize some interesting movesets. So I'll leave a shorter link in the description. Be sure to go check them out if you like a strong OU opponent. Now, on my side of the field, I really wanted to try out Diancy. I've been playing around with it a good bit, and I cannot find an optimal set for regular Diancy. Um, if you have ideas for Diancy, feel free to leave them in the comments. But this one in particular is a Stealth Rocks in three attacks. I also have a Defog Offensive Latios. Latias, excuse me, uh, Mammo Swine with uh, um, Icicle Plate, I believe. I have a weird Venusaur set that I EV specifically to live some physical hits, which is my Mega Venusaur. I have a really bulky Caesar, and of course, defensive uh, Wish Passing Vaporeon that can also go for Substitute and Baton Pass it. Now, his side of the field, I had to be really careful with Magnezone and Landorus and Greninja. Those were the main threats to my team, especially if Landorus was a Scarf variant. He can kind of earthquake a lot of my team outside of Latios. I keep saying Latios, Latios. Of course, Magnezone can trap Caesar, so I had to be careful about that. And Greninja just packs a punch. He starts off with Greninja here, expecting him to either go straight for the water move or to go for a dark type move, expecting a switch. I switched out to Vaporeon, but Grass Knot hits me really hard. You don't often see that move on Greninja, just because Rotom's so popular and Rotom's not very heavy. Now, expecting him to overpredict on the next turn because the two at KO is obvious, I decided to stay in and go for a Wish. Uh, he actually ends up going for Ice Beam, so that does work out. It takes a little bit more life orb damage. And now, I was hoping he'd switch back to a Water move, uh, but he just goes for the Grass Knot again, maybe expecting to switch to the Diancy. I'm not really sure there. But either way, Caesar gets his HP back, and now I can threaten him with a Bullet Punch. But we're just going to go for a U turn because the switch out into Landorus is really, really obvious. It actually does that, which is good because now I can see if he has leftovers or if I don't see an item, we can see if he has choice scarf or choice pants, something like that later on. So we actually do see leftovers, which is good and bad. Of course, that means he is a more defensive variant. Typically, uh, I wanted to bring in Mammal Swine just to threaten him and force him out and not let him set up his stealth rocks. I figured he would switch. So I went for Icicle Crash instead of um, Ice Shard. And boy, howdy, does that do a lot to uh, Gyarados, even though it was minus one and neutral uh, he does mega evolve i just went out expecting uh him to use a water type attack but he just goes straight for the mold breaker earthquake maybe expecting the latias to switch in to resist earthquake and all that good stuff i bring in mega venusaur or venusaur and use this as an opportunity to mega evolve because i really needed the added defense so i could switch venusaur in easily and i knew gyarados sometimes carry substitute because substitute and dragon dance pretty common set uh, although I didn't know if he had it, so I just went for straight for that instead of trying to put him to sleep or release him or anything like that. I am fortunate that my Venusaur basically walls his Conical Door. Uh, poison Jab won't do much, Knock Off won't do much, I resist Drain Punch, and of course Ice Punch is uh, doing neutral damage. So, not that worried about Conical Door. Normally that thing's a big pain in the butt. Uh, I just decide to stay in. He has, he switches into Magnezone and doubles out to Latias, expecting Earthquake. He was just scouting to see if I had it, so that worked out in his favor. I was hoping he would just drop a Draco here because that's what Latias likes to do is just drop Draco being yours. But he was wise not to do so because I have a Diancy. I thought I would take that Psy Shock a lot better than I do just because of Diancy side defenses, but having low HP really doesn't allow that to happen. Uh, so Diancy goes down without doing a darn thing in this battle, which sucks. But anyways, though, I just went out into Caesar and then doubled down to Latias, expecting the Magnezone switch in. And here I'm just able to drop a Draco Meteor. I wanted to see what item his uh, Magnezone was holding. 
in case that was his Scarfer. And it might be because he switched it out after going for a flash uh, cannon. I just went for recover to get my HP back because I had a feeling Landorus was coming in. And there wasn't much that I could do to it. I could use Draco Meteor again, but it wouldn't really do that much damage. Now, expecting him to set up Stealth Rocks, I go out into Caesar just so that I could, um, I decided to U-turn again, expecting um, to switch out. And unfortunately, he gets a crit, but fortunately, I am a bulky Caesar, so I am able to live it uh, on very little HP, which sucks because now his Stealth Rocks are up. Um, I go right out into Mammoth Swine to threaten him out with an Ice Shard. Uh, he actually decides to stay in this time. I expected him to stay in this time because he, he has a Stealth Rocks up. He, he probably won't be using Landorus as much. And I thought the Ice Shard would kill, but he is definitely physically bulky because that didn't quite kill. And I have a chance to kill physically bulky ones with my Icicle Place set. So um, I didn't want to stay in here because the Mach Punch was really obvious. Uh, and even if he did go for Drain, I just couldn't risk it. My Mammoth Swine is way too important to check the remaining members of his team. Uh, Latias and of course even uh, Greninja to a lesser extent. I just need priority against his team at this point. And of course, why stay in when I can just switch in Venusaur for free? Uh, Conkle Bear can't do much and I can synthesis and get all my HP back. I really like this Venusaur set because people play around Venusaur expecting it to have Sleep Powder or Leech Seed. And this one just has Earthquake, Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, and Synthesis. So I'm able to get my HP back relatively quickly, especially on switches. And it can take physical hits very, very, very well. Now he just continues to kind of chip away at me. I think he realizes that Conkledur isn't really that useful against my team. Um, I'm not going to let him get a mock punch off against my Mammal Swine. So I think he just wanted to get in something else with my Venusaur with as little health as possible. Now right here, uh, I figured that he'd switch from the Latias uh, just because that was, that just seemed like a bait the way he brought it in right there. And I also knew even if he went for Psy Shock, I would live the hit. And so I stayed in and went for Sludge Bomb, and I'm able to catch Greninja on the switch, which is fantastic. I was actually expecting him uh, to switch out into... Uh, actually, I wasn't expecting Greninja. If I had expected that, I would have gone for the Giga Drain. So I'm, I was able to hit him with a really strong neutral hit just by staying in. And we see there that the Psy Shock does not do that much damage uh, just because I'm physically invested. And knowing that I could uh, live it, I just stayed in and went for the Sludge Bomb. I was hoping that he'd over predict and switch out and I could synthesis up, but he actually just goes in and takes out my Venusaur, but that's okay. Cause my main point in doing all that was to put Latias at a range where I could easily take it out with Mammal Swine. And that's exactly what happens right there. Now right here, I was hoping he'd over predict again. I just stayed in and went for another Ice Shark cause I needed to make sure I put Gyarados at a range where my Caesar could KO him with the Metal Coat choice, uh, a Metal Coat boosted Bullet Punch. So he's definitely in that range now. And um, if the, at the very least, all he has left is a Greninja with a tiny amount of health. So all I have to do is hit a Draco Meteor and then finish it off. But unfortunately, I missed two Draco Meteors in a row. And I'm able to KO him with uh, my Caesar, but he still has his Magnezone. And I really needed to KO that thing first. But I went for the um, superpower on the off chance that he wasn't Scarfed. But hey, he probably is, or he's just running some speed investment. So that kind of sucked, the hacks in that battle, but that was just one of those battles where I was just really happy with the way that I played. I don't often play OU just because the metagame is kind of trite to me. Everyone kind of uses the same things, but then I have opponents like Rucario who really help shake things up and bring some interesting Pokemon to the field. So I hope you guys enjoyed this battle. I definitely don't mind the loss when the battle is that strong of a match. Um, Missing the two Draco Meteors there at the end was kind of unfortunate. I'd love to hear if you guys have any stories of hacks on the very, very, very end of the battle where you probably could have won. Because if I hit either one of those Draco Meteors, then he would have brought in Magnezone and I could have hit that with another Draco Meteor. So I, I would love to hear stories about your guys' hacks near the end of the battle where the battle was lost because of it. But, you know, you still enjoyed it. In the meantime, make sure you go check out the Mega Glalie upload that I posted yesterday. If you're interested in my thoughts on Mega Glalie, what sets you might see. And I will see you guys later. Alrighty, bye bye.